Roger once again Mud Files University today explaining the nuclear core and there is nothing in the nuclear core other than positives and negatives. There is no neutrons and this is a nuclear core the guy just built. Latham is crazy machines, incredible tractor beam magnet. If you take five pro protons and six electrons and put them together you will have a nuclear core that will force any incoming electrons to exist in a region surrounding it and that is what they did and boom there it is that is quantum go up here and watch this he shakes it he jiggles it he shakes it finally it will take off and that is light and in between it's heat these are light experiment results i've been analyzing for years now through at least three years that is red laser light all these little dots I believe are the electrons that are free floating in the air that would collect on you as static and discharge to ground as actual discharges of electrons okay this is the accelerated light that is the plasma these are the Higgs bosons these are the fields that they present these are there is a white particle that crashed and presented a particle that nobody knows about. These are the actual particles and they are dipoles. There's black and white. They have a spike coming up and a spike going down. It could be a torus. It could be working on inductive capa I mean, uh, uh, capacitive and uh, inductive reactants. This appears to be the particle spinning to the right, compressing as it leaves the accelerator in the boson phase. We're going to go all uh, extreme details on all of this. And uh, let's go forward into the, the numbers and all the rest. Okay, this is the numbers. Now, Einstein said E equals mc squared. Well, what does that mean? He said that light is a photon and it comes from the sun to the earth as a, as a magnetic thing. Now, he said that it has zero rest mass. A photon doesn't weigh anything. It has no mass at all. And it ends up, it has zero energy according to his, his calculations. It's obvious. So no, and there is no massless thing exists. There's nothing that exists if it's massless. It's just simply not there. It cannot accelerate because they say, oh, oh, it's just massless until it starts accelerating. I say, what accelerates? Well, the massless thing. I say, what is it made out of? Oh, and then they start to cry. Now, therefore, energy would equal zero because that's the mass times, I don't care what you put it, time, you threw a big number in there and make it look like it would work, but it's not. It's zero times anything is zero. So, therefore, light energy equals zero. It's very wrong now. Now, the electron flood theory has no light speed set. That, that has, I don't know where that came up from. Now, the factors for light speed and energy are these. You have the rest mass, which has to be something. There is nothing that is nothing that does anything. Then you have the particle speed. That particle, which is going to move, how fast is it moving? Then you have the spin factor, because they spin to the right-hand rule. How fast is it spinning? Some spin fast, some spin slow. The faster it spins, the more angular momentum, the more angular momentum, the more impact. IMD, Im impact medium density. What does that mean? If I hit against a mushroom, it doesn't impact so hard. I don't have as much energy. If I hit against a brick wall, it's a little different. Then you have the travel medium density. What are we moving through? Are we moving through a vacuum? Are we moving through dense space? Then you have the ITM, the target movement. Now, is it going away? Is it going sideways? Is it going to the left, to the right, up, down? Da, 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 da. Is it coming at us? All of these things play a pack. So, therefore, the equation is energy equals Rm, which is the rest mass, times the particle speed, times the spinning factor of that particle, times the impact density that we're smashing into, times the travel medium density that we are plowing through, how thick it is, times the a target movement, if it's going away or forward or backward. All of those working together will end up telling you how much that particular energy represents. Now, there's things that I, I mean, there's a lot of things I don't know about, trust me. This, this, and this, this might be totally wrong, but it sure looks right to me. 
Now, what about, it's possible, uh, what do I have here, possible, or it is possible that the smallest particle there is, is this resting mass, atomic mass unit, electron, proton, bit. Let's call them electron, proton, bits, because they are 1,800 times smaller than we think of right now. A proton is 1,800 times smaller, and the electron is the same size. And they add up together to make neutrality plus one extra electron in the core gives it negativity and no other electrons will be allowed in. And you can have extra more even electrons in the core so that it has five or six or seven extra electrons depending upon the size of the element that we're dealing with. And at that point it will collect more and more electrons in the outer shells. You know, they'll, they'll just keep trying to get in and they'll just keep collecting them in the outer shells. It depends on how much positive pull there is. Now, then we saw a reverse spinning particle. Now, what is the result of that? I can see there's some serious energy going on, but I also see it may have created a particle that is not a standard size particle. Now, and that is the smallest particle supposed to be. Electrons are supposed to be the smallest particle there is. I believe they're supposed to be smaller than leptons and quarks and every little thing they call it. And, uh, and I believe they are. I believe they are the smallest bit. And there's, I'm showing the numbers that I'm coming up with, and you can take it from there. Okay, so here's the math. What we got is electron weighs 0. 0.00055. And a little different than that, a little just under that, but very close. And a proton, they say, weighs 0. 0.0073 atomic mass units. That means that a proton is exactly 1,836 electrons, of which I'm saying 19, 918 are positive and 918 are negative. That's what a proton is. Now, when you get to the neutron, you throw in one extra electron. That makes it negative. That gives it a negative propensity. That is what makes the other things hold off in their orbitals outside, as we talked before. The core is flooded with electrons until it achieves over neutrality to the negative side. Additional electrons coming in will not be allowed. It says we already got an extra one. I say this is a, this is a hydrogen. It says, I'm the, I'm the proton in here, but I also have an extra electron. So, I have 918 positives, but I have 919 electrons. That gives my core a negativity that will hold one extra electron out in its orbital. That is hydrogen. Then you go up from there, there's still like a snowball full of electrons. But you can't have just any size snowball. They can only exist in resonance frequencies. And a resonance frequency determines the wavelength of the wave, the distance of the wave, the, where the Fraunhofer line will exist and the electron will be stable. Simple as that. There's no neutrons whatsoever. Get them right out of your mind. Electron flood theory says that every particle is negative or, po or, or positive, and all cores become negative, and they exceed the, neg the neutrality just slightly, and sometimes more. Because if you think these nuclear cores, and like uh, hydrogen is just hydrogen, and helium is just he helium, and iron is just iron, that's crazy. There is so many oxidation states and isotopes and all kinds of things with chemistry that it, it, there is no this chunk is just a chunk. No, when I show you the different weights just related to hydrogen, there's no just one hydrogen. There's okay, deuterium and tritium and you know, deuterium and blah, 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 blah. Now, and they're all electrons in different variations. However, an electron is a dipole. So, let's go a little further. There's no neutrons. Light is electrons. Light is electrons. They're the electron part. They're the, the, the electron part. And they flow from the orbitals because they're the lightest part. They get thrown out of there when they get excited. Now, they go flying off, and when they are moving, they're light. And they're individual particles. They're particles. I've shown them in the, in the light experiments. Now, protons are... 918, and I'm just talking about um, a single, what they were considered the proton before. 
it's really 1918 positives and 1918 negatives and that gives it a resonance value all right that's what a proton can be can resonate at, apparently now nuclear core always has negative over neutrality so you ne the nuclear core will never be positive unless you strip the negatives from it and how could you do that cold extreme cold can pull negatives so dramatically that it will achieve positivity to some degree and float up in the air in a magnetic field. That's why you see when they do they pour ni liquid nitrogen on these little ceramic things and they pop up in the air, they have to hit an exact free, um, temperature and at that point the electrons are being pulled so quickly away that they, they cannot come back in quick enough, they can't flood back in quick enough, it pops up in the air. And it'll pop up at a certain distance because that distance is determined by the the quality, quantity of positives in the core versus negatives, and now the negatives are gone from all around it and possibly from that extra one that was in the core, because it says, you, you know, cold wants you, go. And then all of a sudden it hits neutrality, boop, it pops up in the air. And guess what a nuclear bomb is? A nuclear bomb does the exact same thing. When you crush all that stuff together, the first thing to go is the electrons. You see it flash, poof. The next thing you see is the core goes straight up in air because now there's no more electrons. It is positive. The earth is positive. As we know, you put a wire down next to the earth and it will suck every electron it can get. That positive goes zip straight up in the air and you see the mushroom cloud surrounding it, pulling all of its electrons back in to achieve neutrality again. This is Guide Wiki, and this is an atomic bomb explosion. I hate atomic weapons, but this specifically does exactly what I need to do. It shows every single interaction in the core, in the nuclear core. Now, I claim there's no neutrons, so what is going to come out of here? The first thing that will come out is the electrons, because they are the weakest bits and they are in all the orbitals, they will force together and those will push away and the core will compress and at that point the core will become positive of course there'll be bits and breaking like little magnets will be broken up in there, little bar magnets because the nuclear cores will also go out of resonance and be thrown out of there in violent like a grenade going off of little bar magnets. So that'll be the second thing that follows. They thought that was the neutron showers. It is not. It is bar magnets, little bits and pieces, which will explode sooner or later or reattach somewhere because they're not stable outside of their resonance frequencies. That is nuclear decay. Now, the next thing that will happen is this positive core will react to the positive Earth. And you say, why is the Earth positive? Well, obviously Earth is positive. Anytime you take electricity, zzz, go right to ground. If you have static collect on you from walking around in the free electrons that are floating in the air called ether, that's what it is, it collects on you, zzz, it'll snap to ground in like a water pipe or something like that. The Earth is a po electric negative attractive it'll, it's a positive polar it just sucks electrons down so now this core now is positive the electrons left we saw them flash out and i will explain exactly as it goes through the next thing will happen you'll say i'm getting out of here because i'm positive you're positive i don't have any negatives for you so we'll get out straight up in the air then what happens you will see all of the surrounding electrons that it can gather come back into itself to repopulate its positiveness. In the meantime you'll see water vapor showing up in rings up here. That is the the layers of the atmosphere being vaporized. All right, here we go. That is the original explosion where everything compresses and it explodes. So now, that's the light. Here it goes. That's our white light. There's the vaporized atmosphere. There is the nuclear ball. Now, it is going straight up in the air. 
they say, why would it go straight up here? Why is it still glowing like crazy? That, of course, is the shock wave of the atmosphere being concussed. And then you say, why is it still glowing like crazy up there? Why isn't that staying down here? Why didn't it make a boom like this? It's getting out because it is now positive. And why is all this stuff rolling back in like that? It's trying to pull back its own electrons or any electrons it can get a hold of to become stable again. So what is the effect on the surrounding area at this instant? Not much. Other than the radiation that's coming out of here like a glowing ball, maybe some heat. But just prior to this, you had the light, every single electron virtually that was capable of getting out of there left. And then following that, you had chunks of bar magnets instead of having 1,836 particles together to make a neutron, you had 809 or something like that, just some crazy number, and they're flying through the air saying, what do I do, what do I do? Smash it to anything you hit and rip it to shreds until you can find something to attach to. They weren't neutrons, they were bits and pieces of those particles that are positive and negative. There is no the whole thing has to change. You've got to change everything. Get rid of the neutrons. Anyway, that's the, uh, let me show you where, what to look at and, and to go forward if you're that interested. All right, I don't want to belabor this, but if you think that, that helium is, you know, oh, it's a noble gas. Oh, it's just two of this and two of that. <laughs> let me show you something. That is what helium is constructed of. Isotopic masses. These are all helium. It's all helium. Now, we look at all the different weights and sizes and half-lives and this, this and spins and all this nonsense. The only way any of this can possibly work is to have everyone, this is the basic little particles here and there. And it's not just a bunch of two big chunks and then a whole bunch of other things. Well, well how did this, this is impossible. So, my theory is so much more advanced and correct than theirs. And it needs to be looked at. Otherwise, they're just shooting in the dark. You know, at least, at least take a look at it. I, there's no way in the world you could convince me that my theory is, is worse than this theory. Now, there's something else extremely significant. If this is correct, and this is accelerated light, which it is. I can't see any, any way you can possibly deny that. And this is the particle, which it is, and it is showing, which it is, and it is turning into plasma, which it is, and it is accelerating. And, and if this is correct, and it could be done with heavy particles, there's a case for fusion here. And it's being ignored, and there's a possibility to get cold fusion, because this is a passive crusher and that's all they're doing with what they're doing in CERN and all these places with their crushing things all they're doing is crushing something and that crushes it because these own large regions and when you force them to to be in each other's regions and then constrict they will compress they will plasmatize and if they are heavy particles they may lose the disassociate they may disassociate to their nuclear bits that hold them together in that particular form and they may reform and lose a bunch of these nuclear bits. What I'm saying are electrons. And then you got electricity and then you end up with a lower form of, of element which, you know, you saw those isotopes. Um, or you maybe did, maybe you didn't, I don't know. But they, they, that's the whole key here is to get it in a plasma state then you can achieve fusion. And they say that, so I don't know, that looks like plasma to me. I can tell you something, this guy is great. Tyler DeWitt, Discovery of Electron, Cathode Ray Tube Experiments. It shows exactly what I'm talking You can understand it once you understand my theory, you'll understand that thoroughly. Now, let's go to my channel, which has all of the stuff you're interested in. Uh, and uh, here it is right here. Is cold fusion plasma now possible? Uh, Mr. Rogers attacks Mr. Einstein. <laughs> Electron flooding possible new atomic model. I've been I've been just throwing this out there. I'm gonna keep throwing it out until somebody addresses it. They won't address it. They won't address it. Look, boom, 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 boom. I got more stuff 
and not one single person in the realm that should be looking at this will look at it. Because I talk about God, and I talk about Jesus. Jesus speaks, you best listen, and they best, because I have found things that they have no clue about, and they will never have a clue about until they start looking. And until they start looking, I mean, I don't really care if they look or not, to be perfectly honest with you, but I want reality for everybody, and that's just being not allowed in the in the academic system. We have a terrible, terrible problem here that has to be addressed, and I'm doing everything I can to address it. So, Mount Foster University, come on up. Thank you.